is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I thank my friend for yielding me this time. Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong support of the Comprehensive Addiction Recovery Act. There's no question that we have an opiate epidemic sweeping our communities throughout Wisconsin and the rest of the nation. I've spent the better part of the last year holding listening sessions back home in my congressional district in western and, and north central Wisconsin, getting feedback from law enforcement, from health care providers, treatment centers, families that have been impacted by drug addiction, the opioid uh, addiction, uh, to ensure that this legislation that we have pending before us today doesn't get too far out ahead of what they actually need. And there are a lot of good policy changes in this bill. But one thing that's lacking uh, that the gentleman uh, also pointed out is the resource aspect of this. They do need tools. They do need additional resources. I'm hoping that later in the year, whether it's through a continuing resolution or the funding of these uh, operations, that we can find in a bipartisan way to increase some necessary resources for uh, folks back home so they can get out ahead of this curve and, and do an adequate job of turning the trend line away. I'm also supportive because the legislation before us contains the Jason Simkowski Promise Act. Jason Simkowski was a veteran who died at the Toma VA Medical Center a couple of years ago due to an opi opioid drug overdose. And um, we have in this legislation continuation of reforms that are being implemented to ensure that all of our veterans, whether in Wisconsin or throughout the nation, are getting the care and the treatment they need, that we continue down the road of revamping the pain management practices at places like Toma. And I'm confident that with provisions in here, if we do this the right way, that Toma and the VA system could be a model of proper pain management practices, not just within the VA system, but throughout the entire health care system. There's no question we haven't done a good job of managing pain as a nation. That's true of whether it's in the VA, it's true of whether in the health, uh, private health uh, sector. This legislation before us today gives us an opportunity to continue down that road and do a much better job. The Jason Simkowski Act, for instance, will call for clinical practice guidelines to be instituted throughout the entire VA system. It enhances pain management education and training for our health care providers. It improves real-time tracking and access to data on opioid uh, usage. It also expands on opiate safety initiatives throughout all the VA centers. It expands the patient advocacy program, which is particularly important because I think the family are the first line of defense when it comes to the care and treatment of all our veterans. They know what's working and what isn't. They need greater input and better lines of communication to help affect the course of treatment that's impacting the veterans in their life. And also calls on the VA to explore more complementary and alternative forms of medicine to deal with pain management. So we're not just loading our veterans up with a cocktail of prescription drugs, which oftentimes lead to addiction, which can lead to meth and heroin usage. But I also think that this legislation gives us an opportunity to establish that strong partnership that needs to exist at the federal, state, and local level, and including private entities, uh, so we can do a better job on the opioid uh, addiction problem throughout our nation. This is an all-hands-on-deck moment. As a former special prosecutor who had to deal in the criminal system with a lot of it, our response cannot just be a criminal justice response. It has to be a public health response or we lose this battle going into it. I think this legislation does provide crucial tools to help us make that pivot, but we also need the crucial resources, and that's something that we're going to have to address as this year progresses. So with that, I encourage my colleagues to support this legislation. I appreciate the hard work that the committees and those involved have put into this legislation, but it will be a work in progress, and we have to continue to listen to the folks on the ground back home to ensure that they're getting the help and support that they need. I yield back my time. Gentlemen.